Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I had a question posed to me and I figured might as well show uh, the push uh, about uh, being physical with your hands, doing hard labor and everything, and getting out in nature at summertime. But I had a question posed to me. What's the worst thing about being a Christian? Okay. So right now, I'm new at this, so <laughs> bear with me. Uh, started a garden. Asparagus is kind of leaning. I'll have to get a stick. Uh, potatoes are starting to come up. A lot of things didn't make it. So uh, I am having my first salad from my garden. I got two red strawberries. I don't know if this is showing. That's all I got to show is two red strawberries. Zucchini's taking over everything, so I'm going to have to transplant it. And uh, I'm still working on the yard, getting the pond put in. Let's see where I go. Okay. Getting the pond put in. But I was coming out here and I was thinking, you know, I wanted to tell the brethren and encourage them to work with your hands and accomplish things. Get out and physically work. I mean, there's a time to sit behind a computer. There's a time to sit behind a desk. There's a time to sit and relax. I mean, I do it. I sit and relax every evening on my deck and listen to the Lord. Um, old hymns, His Word being read, Bible studies. Sometimes I listen to God's music. The wind's blowing through the trees. Sounds like the ocean. The birds are going crazy. Um, but there's there's a big time that needs to be done where you've got to get out and get something done and accomplish something, do something physical. When you work hard and then you sit down, you just you feel good. You just You feel good. So I'm having my first salad. But getting back to that question, what's the worst thing about being a Christian? I had a brother in Christ ask me, what's the worst thing about being a Christian? And I looked at him and I'm like, well... Uh, the vexation of the world. That's got to be the worst thing about a Christian because I am so vexed by this world. I can't go into town without being vexed. Um, you could say anything, s satanic style music, sodomies everywhere, um, you know, what people say, what they're doing, how they have no love for the Lord. Um, it's just vexing in this world today. And he's like, no, that's that is not it. And I'm like, in my head, at first I'm thinking, well, how do you know what's worse? What's worse for you might not be worse for me. But I had to hear him out, and he was right. So then my second guess was the flesh, our struggle with the flesh. How we uh, fight the flesh, fight sin, and we're struggling with it till the day we die. I'm like, that's got to be the worst thing about being a Christian. And his brother in Christ looked at me, and he's like, nope, that's not it. And I looked at him and I said, okay, I give up. What is it? And he looked at me and he said, the worst thing about being a Christian is knowing the truth and nobody wanting to hear it. Uh, Brother in Christ has been trying to preach the truth to his family, uh, to people, um, co-workers, family, friends, and nobody wants to hear the truth. And I had to stop for a second and it actually hit me. And it's like, you know what? He makes a really good point. The worst thing about being a Christian today is that in these last days is that God has given us the truth. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. He's given us the truth about the Bible version issue, dispensational teaching, pre time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ, the true gospel, eternal security. I mean, God has given us his perfect written word in our hands. We have absolute truth. And nobody wants to hear it today. And when he said that, I had to think about some of the... Um, switch your hands. Oh, we've got to turn around so we get the light. I remember giving out gospel tracts. Give them out to people on the beach. Um, I lay them out places. And some people, it just seems like they're just taking it to be nice. But the conversation never really steers towards the gospel. You know, I know a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ have gone through that where you start out by trying to, you know, you're waiting for the door to open. The door seems like it's starting to open and you go to start preaching the gospel, the truth, the Bible version issue. For those who profess to be saved, you say, oh, yeah, that's neat. Well, what about the Bible version issue? Has anybody taught you that? Uh, what Bible do you use? You know, and stuff like that. And when you get into these absolute truths, they tend to shut down. And they don't want to hear the truth. And we've got this truth in us. And we have a lot of people that we love and a lot of people that we care about that's going to be standing before Jesus Christ at the great white throne to be judged. They're going to go to hell because today nobody has a love for the truth hardly. we got our Bible-believing 
um, brothers and sisters in Christ, but, and yeah, there's going to be people getting saved. I'm not saying nobody's getting saved today, but it just really hit home. It's something for you to think about, and it was something for me to think about. The worst thing for being a Christian is having the truth and nobody wanting to hear it. I just thought that was uh, interesting, and it was very true. It rung true. Um, I'm not wearing my glasses, so I'm kind of squinting a little bit. been working outside all day. So, for this little quick walk video, just something to just share with the brethren, you know. Having the truth, and nobody wants to hear it, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm eating a salad from my garden. First salad from my garden. So, uh, hang in there, brothers and sisters in Christ. Continue to handle out gospel tracts. Continue to do your best to try to preach the truth. Um, but the doors are closing so fast, and it's like nobody wants to hear the truth. And that's the hardest thing for us today, I believe, as Christians in the ministry of reconciliation. Nobody wants to hear the truth. So I'm praying for my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I will see you in the next video.